Alright, welcome back to Chicago Cars Direct. Today we're finally going to get some time behind the wheel of our spectacular 1994 Toyota Super Turbo. find the three liter in line six. Basically this car's just got a couple bolt-ons, but it is literally internals are stock. Uh, car runs amazing. Uh, it's a bulletproof motor. Uh, if you're familiar with these cars, which I'm sure a lot of the people watching this probably are, uh, you'll know that this really is an engine that can handle a whole lot of power. Uh, people build them well into the you know 1500, 2000 horsepower range. Uh, but basically the car is uh, almost completely stock, aside from the couple bolt-ons, but this car makes 320 horsepower in the stock form uh, when it came out in 93. Uh, this was really an explosive car. I think it was at the time the fastest Japanese car uh, ever produced for the United States, and it still is one of the fastest, no question there. Uh, but pretty spectacular condition. It's got a handful of miles on it, but uh, we're going to take it for a spin and show you what this thing's all about, and show you how nice and close and new it drives. I'm going to walk around and just show you the condition of the car. Uh, go to our website if you want to see the miles on this. I'm not even going to give it away because if you watch this whole video and then actually look at the clock on this, you'll probably be floored. But regardless, uh, pretty much all original car. I mean, this is what you would have expected if you ordered the car uh, new in 94. The uh, headlamps here have a little bit of a glaze on them. There's a handful of stone chips up front. There was a mounting bracket up front here for the license plate frame. I actually took that off myself. Sold two holes there, but, you know, so be it. That's where they are. Uh, but the front end really looks spectacular. From 5, 10 feet away, you really can't even tell. A couple stone chips and that's all. Uh, take a look down here. You have the stock 17-inch wheel, but you have a Yokohama Advan 032R tire. And this is an extremely aggressive uh, brand of rubber. Uh, obviously, I think you need to get them nice and warm before you actually do something there. I can see the super brakes there. But you know, it's an all-stock setup with a pretty aggressive tire on there. But look at the reflection all the way down. Obviously, this is what we would expect of virtually any car that we have. On the back, again, stock wheel, excellent condition. Uh, Yokohama Advan 032s again. Look at the back of the stock wing. Uh, you do have cat back exhaust on here, so you can see an aftermarket pipe there. Sounds great. You probably heard it on the startup. But that stunning ChicagoCarsDirect.com play frame there. The Supra wing, which is probably on half the Mitsubishi's produced since 2001. And then you can see the whole side here. I mean, that reflection, everything, fantastic. Little tiny stone ship at the bottom of the door here. Oh, that's really the only flaw on the passenger side. In the rear, you see you've got a rear wiper for the rear hatch, but uh, we'll pop this up. Obviously, a nice amount of cargo room. Uh, the, the original owner did delete the rear seats, did take them out. You can see they still got the buckles here from where they were. Um, but you do have a brace there for the uh, five-point harnesses that are up front. I'm sorry, I think they're actually four-point harnesses uh, up front because five-point is technically illegal. But uh, very, very clean, very well kept. And with the sport roof, you actually can tuck the roof right up here so you can store it uh, for your motoring pleasure. Even with the sport roof off, uh, this car still remains very, very solid. You can see the integrity of the doors and on the passenger side as well. Solid car. You can see a great set of Sparco race seats here. Uh, they look almost brand new. Uh, we did not put these in. The previous owner did put these in, but uh, they do have a four-point harness. attaches right in here. Uh, I'm not going to get all gripped up with that right now, but I will step in. Uh, this is a traditional car. Uh, as from Toyota, this does feel stock. I mean, the car, the layout, it's got a uh, tilt wheel here. You sit low, but it's still a very sporting driving position. The visibility is fantastic, uh, and the driving position is actually really comfortable. Uh, Toyota makes some very refined cars, and I had actually never driven a super turbo before I drove this car, ever. Uh, and I was remarkably surprised. The buckle in the uh, four-point harness here. 
nice, but uh, this is definitely, this means business. Uh, what a serious driving position. You can see the whole cabin here is tailored towards the layout of the driver. This is probably the first most driver-centric uh, interior of anything I'd ever seen uh, back in my day. But we did put a new Sony CD player in, as you can see, which actually sounds great because this car did have a great base stereo system. Uh, but above that, automatic climate control, hit auto, dial up your temperature. Uh, you got a boost pressure gauge here that was added. Uh, you can see the nice gauge layout here. Very clean, very simple Toyota, uh, but really a nice car. I mean, I, mean, I can't stress how, how nice this car drives. Uh, I'm absolutely floored by how nice it, uh, and refined it still is, considering this car is 16 years old now. I mean, that's nuts. If this car was a person, it could drive itself. So what's it like behind the wheel of this thing? Well, one, it's uh, it's pretty comfy. I'm not saying that to say that you know it's a comfy riding car, but these Sparco seats are awesome. Uh, I mean, it really does drive like a new car. Obviously, it took a lot of the sound deadening out because these cars weren't really quiet to begin with. Uh, I have always read that they rode hard. Uh, I confirmed that today. You know, everything feels great in this car. I mean, got the ventilation on. Obviously, we're not even riding on that nice of a road. Going to fourth gear. Trans is really strong. This car pulls really, really hard. But it's really cool to drive. I actually really like this driving position. I can't think of a car today you could buy that this driving position relates to. Uh, it's a little laid back, but you're still upright as if uh, not compromised like a 911. That's Toyota quality. I mean, they're rock solid build quality. And if, like I said, go to our website and take a look how many miles are on this car. Uh, I think you will be pleasantly surprised. But we looked, uh, and you know, we searched for this car, and we've actually had it for a little bit of time. We wanted to make sure it was right before we sold it, but uh, I have spent some time behind the wheel of it. It drives amazing. I've never really spent time behind the wheel of these, but twin turbo setup's great. The car sounds amazing. That blow off valve is just something intoxicating. And I'm not a huge fan of turbo either. But what's cool about this car too is that the three liter inline in here is a engine that's based on a Mercedes inline uh, six cylinder, but my mom's 1991 Toyota Cressida had the same engine. Granted, it didn't make this kind of power and it wasn't turbocharged, but same motor. Uh, I don't think it was a 2JZ version. I think it was before JZ was on the wrap circuit. Toyota Super Turbo probably has not, you know, these cars weren't really built to be driven as daily drivers. It's probably been, you know, floored a handful of times, maybe even run out on the track once or twice, but uh, whoever has had this car in their ownership over the years obviously has taken care of it. Obviously they've loved it very much because uh, it really shows that it came from a loving home and drives as such. Uh, but, you know, this is my first experience with the Super Turbo and having driven virtually everything under the sun, it compares favorably well. Now my hands are, I got a copy of the uh, Carfax Auto Check Vehicle History Report. Uh, I mean, there's no, there's nothing to talk about on them. It's uh, squeaky clean. Uh, it scores a 76 on the Auto Check History Report, which is 14 points out of the range in uh, positive territory, so you got a little bit extra credit there. Um, and then I've just got a little bit of rundown just of the mods on here. Obviously, 94 Super is pretty, pretty rare. A turbo, that's even more rare. 
Uh, the mods we know, Sparkle Racing Seats, Catback Exhaust, the cold air intake, the, the beehive up front, or the honeycomb. What do they call it? What do they call it, Dave? All right, fine. Race harnesses, uh, the rear seat delete, which was done by the original owner, uh, and the target top support roof, and then we did put this OD CD in, and it is an automatic, which is set up to go in the straightest line fast as possible, so a lot of people like that too. But check out the guy on our website. Dangerous Dave took his sweet time on this one and took some great pictures. You'll find us at chicagocarsdirect.com, and then when you're done there, go to our YouTube channel. <laughs> You'll find us at youtube.com slash chicagocarsdirect. Thanks for having some fun with us. And this uh, entry-level Japanese supercar, it really could be called a supercar, I think so. It's more rare. You see less of these today than you do a Ferrari 360. So, there you go, Exotic. But thanks for spending some time with us. We'll see you soon.